If they make it through to the final, we'll have had four races in under two hours. So it's tough going, both physically and mentally, because you can appreciate the mental application that's needed here. Fagoni from Italy in lane one. The Australian Kieran Hansen in lane two. Skater number nine, Derek Campbell of Canada. Derek Campbell for Canada, who have a very strong hand. Chai Jihoon Chai Jihoon from Korea. On the outside. Vagoni on the inside, then Hansen. Then Campbell and Chai on the outside. And uh, you can expect Chai to force the pace eventually. Although at the moment it's Hansen who leads. Hansen from Campbell. In third place, Fagoni. But watch out for a move from the man at the back, Chai. He will be, I would suspect, the man to make the first significant move. It's quite interesting there, uh, Campbell, who you'd expect to get right through to the final, would, be, would have been looking for the race to start at a slow pace. And uh, Fagoni, almost losing uh, his grip there, looked like he stepped on a block and is out of contention. And Chai has made the move, we thought, and he immediately opens up a two, three metre gap. And that's bad news for Fagoni. He's trying all he can now to build and get back there, build his momentum, but it's not happening. He's taking a lot out of himself, four laps to go but not a breathtaking pace, and so Fagoni still has a sliver of a chance, but it's very small. He's done very well to nearly get back in touch, but it's still out there in front. Che, Campbell in second, the two of them pulling away. But this is a very strong comeback from Fagoni. Now, can he qualify? Two go through to the semi-final. It's still Che in front, Campbell second. Is there a way through? Fagoni doing all he can. But he goes down, and that's the end of his challenge. And it's Che who wins for Korea. Campbell in second place. A brave attempt from Fagoni, and I wonder there was contact there. Did you see if there was anyone's fault, or do you think there was a natural clash? No, I think that was uh, quite natural. I don't think Campbell was really blocking Fagoni. Fagoni was going all out, though. Uh, he knew he had a lot to do and must have been feeling very tired because he'd pulled back so much. And just looking at the finishing time, the Olympic record is 130.76. That was a very, very quick race indeed. Um, it was around 1.31. So uh, we should get confirmation of the finishing time. But uh, interestingly, Campbell at the beginning was trying to slow the pace down. Hansen came out very, very quickly right at the start, trying to take up the pace. But uh, Campbell trying to dictate it. There you can see Fagoni's first slip. And there's and Che making his move. Well, he just took advantage of that, didn't he? Saw the gap, accelerated in two strides, and away he went. Black uh, Campbell did well to keep with him. And Fagoni there doing everything he possibly can. Blackburn. Um, Campbell just giving an extra big push to get out in front and just clipping Fagoni's skate. Well, didn't Fagoni do well to keep on his feet? Yes, he did, and uh, it was a brave attempt. He's looking for a disqualification there, looking across at the officials. But 10 out of 10 for effort, because after the earlier mistake, I wrote him off prematurely. And he came back strongly. Now, the judges are having a look, and there may be cause for some intervention here, although we thought it was six of one, half a dozen of the other. Well, Blackburn, um, Campbell, obviously uh, needing to accelerate there, and uh, the faster you go, the more extension you need, and I don't honestly think there was anywhere for Fagoni to go. He tried to get up the inside, and there wasn't really a gap. Now, uh, interesting to see what the uh, officials here have done with that. In my book, uh, Che obviously going through. And uh, the Italian coach there appealing. But uh, I think he's got a tough job on his hands. I'm pretty sure that Campbell will qualify. Well, the results coming up on our computer and uh, 
it's gone the other way. Fagoni has been disqualified. So in the end, it was immaterial. Che and Campbell go through. Hansen in third place, but it's academic, really. Fagoni is disqualified, which is uh, a little disappointing for him. Very disappointing, in fact. But particularly after the mammoth effort he made to try and get back on terms. These two skaters are qualified. Number three, Kieran Hansen, Australia, and skater number 24. So there are the results of the first quarterfinal. Che, the winner. Campbell, second. They go through to the semi final, and we move on to quarterfinal number two. Terao from Japan, Lee from Korea, Richard Niazelski from Australia, and once again, Flame from the USA, the man who won a world title in long track and also a silver medalist in Calgary in long track six years ago. Lee from Korea. Yvonne Matou in lane number two, skater number 53, Eric Flame of the United States. Eric Flame. Massive support here from the American contingent, and what a story he is. The pre Olympic event, which happened, of course, here in Lillehammer, and he was second in that event and is in pretty good form. And here's Richard Nizilski. So Lee on the inside, and a full start there. And start not so vitally important in 1,000 metres as it is in 500, but you want to feel comfortable through those first two bends. Well, we've said before that uh, it's a great advantage to try and get out in the front there. And uh, let's just watch that start again. And, uh, wow, dear me. Go on, spot it. I couldn't spot that. It will look pretty close to me, perhaps. Uh, Flame moving a little bit quickly. A little bit of movement there from Flame's right foot. But no one, no one beat the line. No, but the skaters have to stay absolutely still once they get to the start line. Let's watch. Remember, two full starts and you're out of the competition. So the Australian Nizilski settles in behind Lee from Korea. 1990 world champion setting the pace here. So Lee in the lead, Terao second for Japan. But a move by Flame on the inside. Flame moves up second. Well, that really was smooth. He made that uh, almost look like a figure skating move. Eric Flame in second place. Remember to qualify. And Zilski down in third. Terao now at the back of the pack, but nothing between them. Five laps to go. Well, this is a, a very even quarterfinal on paper. And uh, two are going to be unlucky here. But which two? Flame still tucked in second. It's Lee leading. Flame second. Nizilski third. Tarao fourth. Three laps to go. Nizilski all over the back of Flame. Keeps looking on the inside as they go into the bend. Flame just blocking him. Nizilski has another look. Can't get the speed to get round the outside. And Flame not letting him through on the inner. Those two looking good at the moment. Can Nazilski get through? Tries the inside. Now looking on the outside, and it's Tarao who's making his move. And the first two stay like that. Lee and Flame. As we move through this final lap, and Flame's not made it. Oh, that really was unbelievable stuff. Flame was there right up until the last bend, and then Tarao nipped round the outside. He seemed to have so much power at the end of the race. Lee read the race well, kept a good tight line around that final bend, so he had less distance to skate. But Tarao, unbelievable stuff. Tremendous power right at the end. And you can see the, the joy there. But terrific stuff there from Tarao. And... Uh, Lee's time is a new Olympic record. 
one minute 29.58 a new olympic record for lee and terrell not far behind 129.64 well both of them inside the old olympic record so that gives you some idea how tight that race was in fact, all four of them inside the old Olympic record time. Yes, the old record 137.6. Kim ki -hoon from South Korea, who we saw in the first round and is coming up in the next quarter-final. So added importance for him is if he can get his Olympic record back, but he'll be more dedicated to getting through. And their confirmation, Lee and Tarao make it through to the semi-final. Eric Flame is out, and so is Nazilski, but that's quite a shock for Flame going out then. Oh, a tremendous battle there in heat number two. In fact, all four skaters getting new national records. Unbelievable stuff. Well, the standard is increasing all the time, year by year. And that's why it's been increasingly difficult for the likes of Wilf O'Reilly to stay with them. So on to quarterfinal number three, Frederick Blackburn for Canada. Bian Li Li for China. Kim ki -hoon from Korea. And the Norwegian hero, Bjorn Elgerton. Skater number 15, Lee Lian Lee, China. Lee Lian Lee, China. Lee 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 up against the winner and second place in the Albaville Olympics. Will it be the same? A canny start. But it's Kim in the lead and Blackburn in second place. Kim leads from Blackburn. Lee Lian Lee. And Bjorn Elgerton behind. But the favourites are one and two at the moment and taking it easy. Oh, Blackburn just glances across there, gets up on the shoulder of Kim, but uh, he'll not want to take any chances. Elgerton having a look at the back there. Blackburn just uh, keeping with the leader, Kim. Kim accelerating, Blackburn staying with him. Elgerton trying to have a look around the outside. The lap's ticking away. Blackburn blocks him off. Elgerton takes a look down the inside. Blocked off again by Blackburn. It's very close, though, but he can't find a way through. Now Blackburn cuts across, but Kim has the answer. The two of them still in front. Now Blackburn takes him. Elgerton doing all he can, but they're dominating the race from the front. Still Elgerton third. Li Lian Li has got no chance in fourth. It's the three of them into the final lap. And it looks like these two, Blackburn from Kim. And he very, very nearly does it, Elgerton, but can't quite. Blackburn and Kim go through to the semi-final and form for once is done justice. Well, that really was a tremendous race from uh, Frederick Blackburn because uh, while he was in second place in behind Kim, he was getting in all kinds of problems with Elgerton and he sensed that uh, he was in a dangerous spot. He could well have got blocked in by Kim and uh, Elgerton could have come round on the outside. So he had no choice but to accelerate past Kim and take the lead. Tremendous race. He really read it well. Kim there looking very relaxed and... Uh, just uh, showing the difference in class, really, because uh, Kim, even though he was in second place, never got himself into any trouble. He let Blackburn come round the outside, although Blackburn really showing his power there. But Kim, not looking perturbed, he knew that second place was good enough. He kept Elgerton a good distance behind, blocked him out, 
on the inside of the corners. And uh, Elgerton doing a brave job there for Norway, trying to get that skate over the line in front of Kim. But Kim blocking the door. And then confirmation of the uh, results of Heat 3. Blackburn, 130.83. Kim, 130.89. So just six one hundredths of a second between them. And Elgerton there not qualifying. And now the uh, moment that we in Great Britain have been looking forward to. Nicholas Gooch making it through to the quarterfinals. The European champion at uh, 1,500 metres and at 3,000 metres. Didn't qualify in the 500,000, so it's a little short of his best distance, but he's in terrific form. But my, oh, my, has he got a hit here. In lane number one, skater number 54, Andrew Gable, United States. Winner of the pre-Olympic 500. And in just about the best form of his life, Andy Gable from the USA. Li Jiajun, China. Li Jiajun from China. There's Nicky Gooch. Skater number 20, the double European champion, Nicky Gooch of Great Britain. And the favourite. Skater number 10, the reigning world champion, Marc Agnon of Canada. Reigning world overall champion, Marc Gagnon from Canada. So Gagnon and Gable, I suppose, are the favourites, but Gooch not without a chance on his form at the moment. But this is going to be a very difficult race indeed. Well, Nicky Gooch, uh, yeah, I think with one full start. Yes, full start called against him, which is a little unnerving. But he settles in well. In third place. And Gagnon takes up the challenge. Gagnon in the first place. Nicky Gooch biding his time. He's got an electrifying turn of pace when he chooses to use it. Lee in the lead for China. Then Gagnon. Then Gooch. And Gable. Gable going the quickest route and creating quite a surprise. And Gooch follows him. Breathtaking stuff from Gooch, and Gooch takes the lead. Now, is he going to go from the front from here on in? He probably better. Gooch leads. Gagnon second. And uh, Lee for China in third with Andy Gable at the back of the pack. Gooch hanging on in there. Gagnon for Canada all over him. Gooch needs to keep that door shut. Gooch blocking him going into this bend. Gagnon for Canada in second. Andy Gable up into third. Lee having a look on the inside. Pushes Gable out of the way. Gable trying to get back. It's looking good for Gooch now. Gagnon leads. Gooch second. One lap to go. As they hit the bell, Gooch in a terrific position at the moment. It looks like he'll qualify. Lee doing all he can. But Gooch keeps the inside. He's there. And he does. Well, I'll tell you what, that was desperately close because it's the front of the skate to cross the line that counts. And uh, Lee there really diving for the line. He really pushed his skate forwards. And I'm not sure whether Nicky Gooch's skate crossed the line in front of Lee. Well, my initial reaction was that it did. But we shall see. Gagnon for sure won the race. And he is through to the semi final. And uh, I certainly thought that Gooch was second. Lee making that desperate run on the inside. Couldn't have left it any later at all. I think Gooch is OK. And if he is, that is a very good performance indeed to get through to the semi-final in a distance just a little short of his best. Well, it certainly was a tough heat for him. Gagnon read the race very well. Now, Gooch out in front here. Gagnon just in behind him. And you can see a scrap there. Andy Gable getting around the inside of Lee, but Lee not giving up. He really was determined. And look at the angle there. Nicky Gooch trying to keep Lee behind him. Now, this coming up to the finish. Just watch Lee's skate. It's the skate that's got across the line in front. Well, from that angle, you can't really tell, but it was desperately close. Also, an arm went out from Nicky Gooch to Lee as he came through, and maybe that's what the officials are talking about. 
As Lee came in on the inside, Gooch pushed his arm out. And we could have a problem here. At the moment, it looks all right. It looks on our computer. It looks as if Gooch has made it, although, as you say, it's very, very close indeed. But Lee it is who's been disqualified for coming into ground that wasn't his. Uh, presumably that's the reading. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Really, there was nowhere for Lee to go. So uh, the judges, uh, in their wisdom, it has to be said, have uh, disqualified him. So Nicky Gooch getting through there. But my word, that was close for a few minutes. It was, and you were dead right, Chris. It's the front of the skate, as you said. And the front of the skate of Lee's was in front of Gooch's. But we'll take that. Gagnon and Gooch going through. Andy Gable of the USA and Lee of China not making it through. So, the qualifiers for the semi finals are Che of Korea, Lee of Korea, Blackburn of Canada. Gagnon of Canada, Campbell of Canada, Tarao of Japan, Kim of Korea, and Gooch of Great Britain. Those eight make it through to the semi finals, and then again, we'll have the best two going through to the final. Well, it couldn't be uh, tighter, could it? An Olympic record there, a few national records, so uh, a lot at stake, and everybody pushing themselves to the absolute limit. But great to see Nicky Gooch in there. Disappointment, of course, for Wolf O'Reilly, for uh, folks back home in the UK. But uh, Nicky Gooch keeping the flag aloft. The officials out there just uh, clearing the ice because it's quite amazing how deep those ruts get. You can see the angle that the skaters get over going around the corners and the blades very, very sharp indeed. So uh, after only a couple of laps of the first race, there's some considerably deep grooves ground into the ice and uh, easy for the skaters to get caught or lose the balance. So it's important for the officials to keep that surface as smooth as possible. OK, then who's your money on? so far from what we've seen as we wait now the uh, the women's 3,000 meters a slight pause before the women take to the ice there'll be two semi-finals later on we'll have a, a b final and then an a final but uh, put my man howarth on the spot from what you've seen so far those eight qualifiers for the men's semi-finals ki hoon kim okay ki hoon kim i'll go with blackburn who i think looks in pretty good form so it's Kim for Korea, for Howarth, and Blackburn for Reed. And of course, oh, it has to be said, my heart's with Nicky Gooch. Yeah, we mustn't forget that. A little bit of patriotism creeping in there. Sorry for those of you who are watching outside the UK, and we know there are a lot of you across Europe who are not British, but listen in English. So now let's uh, concentrate on the 3,000 meters. 27 laps of the track. The world record is held by Canada on 4:26.26, uh, which means two semi-finals. In the first semi-final, we've got Canada, Korea, Italy, and Russia. And in the sem second semi-final, it's China, France, Holland, and the United States. Canada have a massive contingent to draw from. They are very much the hot favourites. Well, again, in the relay, anything can happen. The changeover is very dicey indeed, and uh, with so many skaters on the ice at one time, anything can happen. It really is an exciting event, and uh, we'll do our best to uh, read the race for you, but my word, it's going to be difficult. It is tough, very tough. And uh, accidents do happen frequently in this. And uh, part of the proposition, really, for the skaters is to keep out of trouble. And I'm sure the Canadians will want to get out in front and work out an appreciable lead if they can early on. Well, they really have got a strong team to draw from. Natalie Lambert in there. Sylvie Daigle. Angela Coutron. Just three of them, and uh, such a strong team. 
Yes, Sylvie Daigle, co-world record holder for the 500 metres until Lambert set a new mark. That was in January. Daigle, who sat out the 92-93 uh, season while attending medical school, but firmly back, always had these Lillehammer Olympics in the back of her mind. And Natalie Lambert, the 91 and 93 overall world champion. Of course, we're looking forward to her in Guildford in April with the World Short Track Speed Skating Championships. Well, Natalie Lambert in incredible form at the moment. She's actually uh, broken the world record in the women's 1,000 metres in the heats in the pre-Olympic competition in Hama. She set uh, 134.07 there. Uh, but that has to be recognized by the ISU at the next uh, International Skating Union meeting, but uh, certainly one to watch out for when the women get underway in their competitions. So there the lineup for semi-final number one. Top two again will go through to the final. The bottom two will go through to the B final. Canada, the hot favorites, but who will be second? Indeed, as we've said, it's not necessarily true that Canada will win, but barring an upset, they should win by some way. And a lot of noise here in the Hammer Amphitheatre. They're the Italian squad. One, two, four, Katia Mosconi. There's Christine Isabel Budrias, one of the four Canadians. And for Italy, Marinella Canclini. Skater number 121, Barbara Baldizera. Barbara Baldizera will begin for Italy. Ivan Tou in lane two. Skater number 106, Isabel Charré, Canada. Isabel Charest from Canada. Ivan Tou in lane three. Skater number 141. Marina Pileva, Russia. So Marina Pileva, the first of the four skaters for Russia. And Chun Li Hyung for Korea will begin as well. And of course, it's random where they make changes. It can happen at any particular stage. That's right, they can change at any time except for the final two laps. And it makes for hectic viewing, but we'll do what we can. Korea on the outside. Italy on the inside. In lane two, it's Canada. In lane three, Russia. And you can see how eager they are to get underway. Well, Barbara Baldizera just being asked to keep her skate back off the line a little bit, but uh, safely away now, and Canada into the lead. So Canada lead from Russia. Korea and Italy at the back. And you can see the mayhem that's being caused already. But there's Natalie Lambert out in front, and the Italians are doing what I thought they might. They trying to make the race over right at the very beginning. Russia in second place. Korea third, Italy fourth. Canada now getting quite a considerable lead, but the Russians trying to hang on in there, and there was a close moment there for the Russians, but uh, the Canadians out of trouble, doing well. Another change over there, very smooth, important for the skater that's just changed to get out of the way. Korea having a look down the inside of Russia, but no room yet. The Koreans have got to get a little bit closer than that. Canada out in front, Russia in second, Korea in third. And uh, 10 meter lead, Isabel Charest in the lead at the moment for Canada. Russia in second. 19 laps to go, but it can change suddenly with just a little bit of trouble. Natalie Lambert increasing the lead now. 
for Canada. Well, she really is a tremendous athlete. And this almost an exhibition performance from the Canadian team. They are so, so strong. And she hands over to Sylvie Daigle. It's hardly fair. So they can relax now and make sure they don't make any more mistakes. Remember the final to come later. The world record, 4 minutes 26.56. And you can guess who holds the world record. Christine Isabel Boudrias takes over. You can see now the ice getting pretty cut up and uh, almost losing her footing there. Important to keep the concentration, try and keep on the clean ice. Now the Canadians have got themselves such a le lead that they don't need to keep such a tight line where the ice is very, very cut up. They can go a little bit wider around the outside of the blocks and try and look for some clean ice. Natalie Lambert taking over again. The Koreans making up some ground, moving into second place, and it looks very much like those two are going to qualify. Italy will make sure that they have the strongest effort, but it, I'm afraid it's forlorn. The Canadian, Canadians just seem to have that much in reserve. Sylvie Daigle there. Over halfway now, just over a 1,000 metres left to go. Well, the Koreans not letting go. They're hanging on in there, and I think getting closer by the lap. So uh, the Koreans starting to reel in the Canadians, but you have to say that you feel from the look of the Canadians that they could just turn on the power again and almost a slip there from Canada. Just reminds me of the uh, 88 Olympics when this was an exhibition sport and uh, Susan Auch for Canada had a fall and that lost the Canadians a medal. So they have to be sure. To rest, hands over a 12 meter lead. Korea just still around 12, 15 metres behind. Natalie Lambert coasting now as we move into the last 500 metres. Oh my word, the Koreans really have pulled up some ground, but the Canadians perhaps just taking it a little bit easy. Korea looking very determined. Of course, they won't want to risk anything because uh, they've safely qualified if they stay where they are. Italy and Russia, I'm afraid, some half a lap back. This is the uh, action that matters. Christine Isabel Boudrias, and I would think there's probably only one more change. Isabel Cherest. And uh, the Koreans just coasting in behind. There won't be any change from here on in. Into the last lap. There's the bell. And it's a very fast time indeed. And it could well be a new Olympic record. It's very nearly a new world record. Only half a second outside, and they were coasting, so they are going to shatter the world record in the final. Well, it does look that way. The Canadians looking so impressive because uh, there's no doubt about it. In the middle stages of the race, it looked as though they just eased off a little bit. They started off very strong, got themselves into a commanding lead, and then really dictated the pace from there on in. The Koreans did very well because uh, they weren't far behind at the end of it, and uh, their time inside the Olympic record as well. Yeah, well, that looked awesome to me. If they can coast like that, I would think they can beat the world record by five, six, seven seconds, minimum. I think they look surprised with what they've achieved and the ease with which it's been done. Well, no doubt about it, they were hot favourites when they came here, but uh, they know only too well how dangerous this sport is, and uh, one slip can put you right out of contention. Of course, if you fall and can get back up and into the race, there's nothing to stop you doing that. You're not out of the competition once you've fallen over. And they, you feel, had enough lead there to be able to have a fall, get back into the race and still come in in second place. They're just cooling down now. And they must be feeling very, very confident indeed. Isabel Cherestu had quite a bit to do. Although the bulk of it bulk of the work was undertaken by Sylvie Daigle and Natalie Lambert. 
So Canada and Korea qualify for the final. I think the uh, final changeover to rest to Natalie Lambert. It really is incredible, the angle that uh, these skaters get over. And uh, incidentally, the blade is offset. If you're wondering how they manage that, the blade's set slightly to the outside so you can keep control. We're going to take a break. See you in just a moment. The men's giant slalom is live here on Eurosport tomorrow afternoon at 13.25. For years now, we've shared everything. Shirts, apartment, everything. Except the telephone bills. Some days he's just simply impossible. But that's fine by me. I hate dancing, to be honest. But how is it she always manages to get her own way? Sometimes he'll say he's written some poetry for me. I know it's shit.